finish in this class. Nice. I wonder what Dave's doing. We've got you covered. Hey, is the power off on this? I don't know. Just take it off. Safety violation. Unsafe work conditions. In the construction trades unions, safety is our highest priority, and we train you to recognize and speak out on unsafe working conditions so that everyone arrives and goes home safely. Learn about careers in construction at georgiaconstructioncareers.com. All right, good afternoon and welcome to the 324th episode of the Alpha Insurance Georgia Prep Sports Drive for the GHSA State Title. Today we have three guests, so it's going to be jam-packed. We're going to talk to Jordan Dubroff in the first segment, talk about tonight's basketball games. It is the final two days of the regular season. Region tournament start next week. And then we're going to have two uh, head coaches that are going to be in the Corky Kell Dave Hunter Classic. As you know, it's 22 teams. 11 of them are first ever Corky teams. And these two will be making their de debuts. That's Hebron Christian, Jonathan Guess, and then Callaway's Pete Wiggins. But let's go ahead and get started with Jordan. What's up, Jordan? How's it going? I'm good. How are you guys? Doing great. So you've got some games you wanted to talk about tonight. I know you've been to a bunch of games this season. You've seen a lot of basketball. Yep. What's your sense just heading into the last two days of the regular season, uh, just how competitive it's been this year? It's, on the girl side, it's been really competitive. Same on the guys. A lot of great teams. We, I like how 7 a has been – doing it for basketball they got the top seven eight got a lot of powerhouse for basketball and six a has a lot of powerhouse too for basketball as well absolutely and then there's some teams that have dominated so far but there's a lot of teams right on their heels yep. but who's been some of the most impressive uh, overall teams you've gotten to see this year I've got to see Walton play. I've got to see St. Pius play, Westminster, um, Milton, McKeetron. Um, a lot of a lot of the teams up in North Fulton, Alpharetta, um, Chattahoochee, Roswell. A lot of great teams this season. For sure, and then there's a lot of great games tonight and the regular season too. Yes, there are, and you mentioned six A. I'll talk about that real quick. I mean, River Ridge hasn't lost a yeah. region game in multiple years, and they only have one senior on their team. And Najee broke down Finley Parker. I think that was yesterday. The freshman. I mean, she was unbelievable, able to knock down threes. Yeah dish out assists, but what games tonight do you think are ones that are going to really be important for some of these teams before they head into the region tournament where uh, the seeding's going to matter and you've got to win to keep the season going? The St. Pius, North Atlanta games, an important game. Walton has a big game against Osborne tonight. Um, Westminster taking on Druid Hills in their senior night tonight. Um, you got Franklin County playing Hart County tonight. Really good teams up there. Marietta taking on Hillgrove tonight. Some of the best teams in the state. You got, um, Lanier, or, or no, Bryan County playing Southeast Bulldog tonight. And, um, White County taking on Lumpkin County tonight. Yep, Some of, and, a lot of good teams are playing tonight. There's a, that's right. There's going to be a lot of great games going on tonight. And you mentioned uh, you Walton got Cal Osborne. Take, yeah. And you got Cal taking on Greater Atlanta Christian tonight. Yep, that would be a big region game. And so a lot of those teams, though, that you highlighted, 
Uh, you're talking about Cobb County teams. I think it's been a pretty uh, solid year for Cobb all around. Obviously, Kel made history last year. Boys and girls both won the state title. Yeah. Wheeler uh, took home another one, but Walton's been top five all year. They're playing Wheeler incredibly co close. On the girls' side, yeah. Lassiter's relevant again. Uh, Pope boys, they're balling out. Sprayberry, Osborne's trying to uh, make the playoffs. So I think Cobb County's had a pretty solid year. But what do you think about a, a big matchup in 4A? It's going to be Holy Innocence against Southwest DeKalb on the girls' side. Well, boys too, but girls' side, this is a really important matchup for the region title. It's... It's going to be a good game. Um, I haven't seen Holy Innocence play this year. Um, if, they, if Holy Innocence can come out strong, they'll they could they could beat Southwest DeKalb. It's it should be a great game. Uh, if it's close by to me, I might go out and check that out. But I might go check out the St. Pius game tonight or the Westminster Druid Hills game because. Westminster, they're in the same region as Holy Innocence in Southwest DeKalb. That's right. And uh, in that region, so you have Holy Innocence, they're undefeated, I think 14-0. and 0, And Southwest yeah. DeKalb, their only loss was a close one to Holy Innocence. But if they win tonight, uh, that tiebreaker could go to them. And then what I've noticed about Southwest DeKalb is uh, they're on, I think, a nine-game win streak, but the defense has been really solid. Two games in a row, they've given up only 26 points per yeah. game, and then uh, their head coach, Kathy Walton, got her 500th career win um, on Tuesday yeah. against Stevenson. So this is a big opportunity. They've already played holy in a sense, but I think this one's going to say a lot um, just about both those teams, how they can handle the pressure. But you look at 4A, can't sleep on Westminster in that region. Uh, they could pull off an upset. Yeah. And then you have Baldwin. You have the Stockbridge girls who actually beat Southwest Cab in the first yeah. round last year. And I think 4A on the girls' side, if you get like a finals matchup between Holy Innocence and Baldwin, might be one of the best games of the season. I agree with you on that one. And looking at Holy Innocence record, um, or schedule from this season, they had a big win over Druid Hills on this on February sixth. It was ninety to eighteen. That's right. And so, I, yeah, Holy and that put them at one fifteen. Of the the on the girls side. And yeah, the I think you're gonna say fifteen straight and wins. Fifteen and zero. Okay, 15-0 in the region. region. And, yeah, so they have a high-scoring attack, but you look at Southwest DeKalb, and what makes them tough is the defense, and that's uh, the yeah. Coach Walton specialty. And then the Baldwin girls, uh, they swept the region, and yeah. they have won 18 straight since that uh, loss to Norcross, which I bet if we talked to Coach Walker, she would – say playing in the Corky Cal against uh, sorry against Norcross losing that game might have been yeah. the best thing to happen to them true true and we need to try to get her on to come talk about the Baldwin girls absolutely and so last year uh, if you recall Baldwin had to play their rival Griffin five times uh, during the year they split but then ended up falling oh yeah uh, a I heartbreaker remember. yeah in the finals and they were the team yeah. that beat Holy Innocence but I think this year Baldwin's just so much better uh, they beat Griffin this most recent one uh, 69 to 40 so they've dominated uh, but you you still have Southwest Cab Holy Innocence lurking but um what else um, in terms of tonight? Uh, I know you highlighted some games, but on the boys' side, what do you think the biggest matchup is? The biggest matchup, looking on the boys' schedule for tonight, um, it, I got a couple games that caught my eyes. Um, Ringgold and Ridgeland tonight. 
both teams are Ringgold 12 and 12 and Ridgeland 12 and 11 going into tonight's matchup on the guy side um, another good game tonight it's going to be the Wheeler boys taking on Cherokee and Wheeler's ranked number 7 on Max Preps that's going to be a really good game and I've seen Wheeler play this season they've had they've had a really good team yep and that's a season. rematch of the state championship last year both teams have lost a lot but that's a chance for Wheeler yeah. to win and I think they still have a chance to earn that top seed because they split with Walton obviously they'll have to get it done in the region tournament I think another one that stands out to me you I got, got what do you think about the Warner Robins Jones County matchup that's going to be a great game tonight. They're, that, who, wherever the game is tonight, it's going to be a packed crowd tonight. Um, another good game tonight is Sandy Creek and Cedar Grove. Oh, at yeah. Sandy, at Sandy Creek tonight. That's right. I think Sandy Creek lost one game last week, but it was outside the classification to a rival. So. Yeah. Uh, they probably have a chance to close it out, but Douglas has been ranked top 10, and obviously Cedar Grove is right up there. You also have, here's an important one, it's going to be Benedictine against uh, Burke County. Benedictine is yeah. coming off two one-point losses in the last month to New Hampstead, so they're probably going to get the number two seed, but uh, they have Caleb Jones leading that offense. He's averaging 30 points per game this season. Uh, he's one of the best scorers, and I think Burke County has a chance to win that one and maybe force a a two-way tie for that number two seed. Um, and then you also have... I've seen a lot of his highlights. He's, he's really good, too. Yes, he is. He can certainly get to the, the foul line, and he's got an unbelievable shot, great handles, yeah. and he's doing a lot of the scoring. Uh, he had like 30 out of their 43 points in the, the most recent game. Uh, let's see. True. Stars Cal in the white water. On the guy side, Cal and um, Greater Atlanta Christian on the guy side. Cal's 20 and 3, Greater Atlanta Christian's 19 and 5 going, in to, going into tonight's game at 7.30 tonight. Yep. I believe right. the game's at Hell. No, the game's at Greater Atlanta Christian, so both fan bases are going to be in the building. It's going to be a packed game over there tonight. Absolutely, and let's shift real quick. Were you able to watch any of um, National Signing Day news uh, earlier this week, and did anything stand out? Um, I didn't get to catch a lot of the um, National Signing Days stuff that happened on Wednesday but I did go back to watch the show and it was a good show you guys did and we For sure speaking of um, other sports that are happening tonight we also have lacrosse starting up tonight as well yes we do so we will have to get those scores updated they'll be at scoreatl.com and there's some big matchups this first week I think you got Walton and North Pius, on the boys' side. St. Pius is playing Lakeside DeKalb tonight at St. Pius. So St. Pius is going to be booming over there tonight. No doubt. And then we've covered the basketball, um, how great this season yeah. has been. I think the playoffs are going to be incredible. Uh, you mentioned the spring sports starting up, including soccer. We haven't gotten your – reaction yet what do you think is going to be like when Atlanta is hosting uh, those World Cup matches in 2026 oh it's going to be amazing it's going to they're probably going to try to get a bunch of this high school soccer teams to try to get involved to help out with the World Cup here with the games going on here at Mercedes Benz Stadium yeah it's going to be a really fun summer 
And have you been to an Atlanta yeah. United game yet? No, I haven't. But I, oh, man, I've that's seen all change. the games on TV. They're fun. Yes, they are. They are fun. Yeah, and, and then, we got boys soccer happening, boys and girls soccer happening tonight. You got Raven County taking on Franklin County and boys soccer, and both teams are really good this year. Yeah, and then I know like that Johnson Gainesville team and Dalton, they're pretty much like yeah, semi professional teams at the high school level. They are going to be nationally ranked and have a big opportunity um well we're going to have two coaches on coming up that are going to be in the quirky kell dave hunter classic i'm sure you've looked at the schedule yeah. a bit got some intriguing matchups uh you got brookwood walton cedar grove douglas county yeah. uh rome creekside but what matchups do you uh, look forward to i'm excited for Ca the callaway game when they get to play in quirky kell this year it, they're going to be a fun team to see play. Absolutely. And Cass, they've been a really great team. This will be the yeah. third year in Corky Kell, and they've never won in Corky. So I think they're going to want to come out and get that win over Callaway. Yeah. And then I'm sure you saw Brody McCorder picked up the big Georgia offer uh, last week. Najee had a story on it. Uh, how huge yeah. is that? Just having another big time prospect um start his junior year right in the quirky cow it's huge because he'll get to you'll probably have a bunch of the coaches come out and watch him play and he'll 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 shine in the games coming up in quirky cow the yeah, other I mean, team i'm excited to see is prince avenue christian on that thursday night action of quirky cow when they play West Forsyth, cross yes. classifications. No, you you said it. That is such an intriguing matchup. I think it might yeah. even be the most one because we saw what West Forsyth was able to do against Cherokee Bluff last year, but that yeah. was just a size different difference. I think Prince Avenue, uh, they just have like a a mismatch problem because they can get everyone going at once, and they were able to win the state title right. last year with so many young skill players they had aaron philo but their running back the yeah. receivers I and mean, they were literally freshmen so i think that's a a huge matchup but before you go i obviously have to ask you super bowl prediction <laughs> i gotta go with the chiefs there we go with the big ones and what do you yeah. think the key to success is going to be? Is it Mahomes, Kelsey, defense, experience, coaching? How do you see it playing experience out? Co experience coaching and who can not turn over the ball and keep possession of the ball. If the Chiefs can hold on, they'll win the Super Bowl, and they will. And then how how do you think Brock Purdy will do uh, in the Super Bowl? He's a guy that has obviously um, done a phenomenal job getting plugged into this role, but uh, people that haven't, the casual fans, gotten to see him play. I mean, how much pressure do you think is going to be on him to have an opportunity to join that elite class of Super Bowl champs? I think it's going to be a lot of pressure, but I, if you can handle the pressure well, it'll, it's going to be a fun game to see, but if Brock Pur Purdy can hold on and keep the pressure calm and stay cool, it'll be a close game, but a fun game. Absolutely, and uh, that will be awesome. Any plans on where you're going to yeah. watch it? Um, probably at home. After I get off of work. Nothing wrong with that. Well, Jordan, thank you so much for coming yeah. on. Uh, we'll obviously have a lot to talk about in the upcoming weeks with all these region tournaments and playoffs. So yeah. we look forward to it, Jordan. Thank you. And I'll have highlights out tonight of some of the games that I'm covering, too. Perfect. All right. Well, there goes Jordan. 
Uh, so that was awesome. Be sure to check out the scoreboard. Uh, there's not as many games as there were last weekend, but there's still some big ones. I think he's right. Let's see how Kel closes out against uh, GAC, the Holy Innocents, Southwest of Cavs, a huge one, Benedictine Burke County, Warner Robins, Jones County, Cherokee, Cherokee Wheeler, Walton Osborne. Lots of big games tonight that will affect the seeding for the region tournaments. But let's go ahead, we'll take a quick break and we'll be joined on the other side by Coach Wiggins. What you doing? Hey, just finishing this claim to get Dave back on the road. Nice, I wonder what Dave's doing. Thing. We've got you covered. Hey, is the power off on this? I don't know. Just take it off. Safety violation. Unsafe work conditions. In the construction trades unions, safety is our highest priority, and we train you to recognize and speak out on unsafe working conditions so that everyone arrives and goes home safely. Learn about careers in construction at georgiaconstructioncareers.com. All right, welcome back. So hopefully we'll be joined by Coach Pete Wiggins shortly. Um, we are very excited to have them in the Corky Kell Dave Hunter Classic. They are going to be playing a huge matchup against Cass at Barron Stadium. And Callaway is no stranger to playing uh, these top uh, programs every year one of their big rivalries uh, they've been in two-way they play troop um, who's in foray they've played central carroll lagrange they've really battled with all those teams i've been covering class 4a for almost 10 years and so i always check to see how 4a does against the other classifications and they usually fare pretty well but callaway uh, they are the giant slayers. They always seem to play incredibly well against uh, upper uh, classification teams. So I think they're going to come in ready to roll. Uh, they've had tremendous success with Coach Wiggins. Just had another quarterfinals appearance this last season. They made the playoffs every single year since 2006. That was Coach Wiggins' second year at the school. And he has racked up, it looks like, 10 region titles in the state championship in 2020. So I'm excited to talk to him about preparing for this season. Do we see Coach Wiggins yet? One sec, guys. Hey, Coach, how's it going? I'm doing well. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. I just texted you, so ignore that. We are happy to have you on. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, so, Coach, what's the big uh, goal this offseason for your team, just preparing for another uh, uh, talented schedule and just keeping um, the Cowboy program in contention? It's not good right now. I can't. I can't hear. Uh, I can't hear the questions. I can't hear. Uh, if... Okay, stand by for a sec. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Coach? All right, that's too bad. Hold up one sec. How about now, Coach? Can you hear me? I, I, I do hear you. It, it's going in and out, but I hear you. Awesome. So we'll give it a try, Coach. But um, 
wanted to ask you just what's the biggest thing you guys are going to be focused on uh, this off season? Uh, just getting ready for another opportunity this season to compete for a state title. Well, um, uh, we're working hard right now in the weight room, just like always, and like we've done for a long time. I'm, uh, I've been really proud of our guys, and uh, uh, we started on January the eighth uh, uh, with with in school and uh, and after school uh, programs. And and right now, I've been pleased with our work ethic and, and where we're at. We got a long way to go. Had a big senior class used to feel uh, to get back to the level that we need to be but uh, uh, right now I'm proud of our work ethic and, and uh, you know what the, the kids show it up and uh, and uh, just kind of doing what we do each day yep and you guys are going to be opening the season in the Corky Kell Dave Hunter Classic I'm pumped about the matchup I think it's going to be fantastic but what are your thoughts about uh, coming up to Rome and squaring off with a cast team that you know is going to be ready to roll <clears throat> hey, you're you're still kind of breaking up on me, but I, I think you're asking me about my schedule, and and uh, I, I'm going to talk about that, and I, I hope that uh, I hope you can hear me okay. But uh, you know, we we open the scrimmage game against Bowden High School, Coach Rich Finley. Uh, that's going to be a, a a great opponent, big atmosphere. Uh, uh, Bowden's coming off the state championship, and uh, uh, shoot, I, I know they they've got a great football team, a lot of players back, and. Uh, you know that that that'll be a big uh, uh, challenge for us, and uh, we have the opportunity to play in the the Corky Kell this year. We're really excited about that, uh, playing a team like Cass, and uh, what a, what a great program. And uh, I've got a lot of really good ball players and uh, a lot of depth. So uh, you know that that's going to be a huge challenge for us. And uh, Opelika High School, uh, and then uh, Cook County. Uh, Columbia and Redan uh, before we start the region. So all those football good tradition, a lot of depth, and uh, just looking forward to that non-region schedule before before we get into uh, region play. And Coach, can you hear me? Coach, I wanted to ask you about, I saw your defensive coordinator after 19 seasons left. So, what are your thoughts about what he was able to do at Callaway, and um, how you guys are going to fill that void? Well, uh, Dusty Hubbard has done an unbelievable job for us for the last 19 years at defensive coordinator. I mean, he's uh, um, he's been a huge uh, uh, part of our foundation uh, with success that we've had. Um, uh, he he's always brought a great intensity. He he, he uh, the kids love him so. You know, there's there's big shoes to fill, but I'm really proud for him. Uh, his son Bryce is graduating this year, and he's going to go play college ball. And uh, and uh, you know, it's uh, Dusty wants to be able to spend time with him and his family. And uh, uh, so I, I'm proud for him. He certainly earned the right to to, to do that. And um, uh, so I'm, I'm proud for for Dusty. And uh, and uh, I, I know that this will be a you know a different chapter in his life that he's starting. And uh, uh, but uh, you know, moving forward, we we we've got big shoes to fill, and uh, we're we're looking right now for a for a a person to uh, to uh, be our defensive coordinator, and uh, uh, so uh, you know, we'll spend the time that we need to to try to make that decision, and and uh, you know, looking forward to uh, uh, to to ha ha you know having having uh, a. a a new body, a new, uh, you know, a, a new uh, a person to, to bring some energy and and uh, we'll see what that looks like down the road. For sure. And then uh, I think one of your other coordinators, so you guys have had continuity, but you've also seen them take these head coaching jobs, but that's Matt Napier, uh, LaGrange, it's kind of a rivalry, yep. but they're also going to be uh, in the Corky Cal. Uh, what's your thoughts just on the whole lineup and how big this first week is going to be of the season? Well, uh, we're number one. We're excited for the opportunity. I mean, we're we're for for Callaway High School to have the opportunity to to play in the Corky Kell. So, so much tradition in that game, and uh, to have the opportunity to play in um, 
uh, you know, on, on, on TV uh, for, for our kids, for our football team, for our community. Uh, you know, that's really special. And, uh, uh, and, and then playing against a, a, a great team, a, a team that's well coached and, and uh, has a lot of really good ball players in cast. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's an opportunity and uh, we're, we're looking forward to it. I mean, we, we've got a long way to go uh, in preparation for that. And, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I'm excited. I'm excited for, the, for that opportunity. And uh, we, we appreciate um, uh, just, you know, just being there. <clears throat> yep. And then, so defensively, you guys have been uh, just tough every single year. That's why you guys have won the state titles, dominated the region. But what are you looking for offensively uh, this year, just in the execution in these moments and being able to sustain drives and really use the clock to your advantage? Well, um, you know, we, we want to, for, for a long time, you know, we want to we wanna be good up front. I feel like that uh, to have success, you you know, you have to be good up front, and that all starts with the offensive line. And uh, uh, but uh, and then you want to be able to run the football. Or we want to be able to run the football. So, so you know, hopefully we can do that. I think Coach Zach Giddens has done a, a phenomenal job uh, uh, <clears throat> for the last uh, four years uh, uh, as our offensive coordinator. So uh, he'll continue to do that. He works extremely hard, and, um, and I mentioned earlier our guys are working really hard in the weight room right now. So. Uh, from from an offensive standpoint, I mean, we'll have new faces and uh, uh, a lot of big shoes to fill. You know, had 18 seniors and uh, a lot of uh, several three-year starters, so there, there's there's big shoes to fill. But uh, uh, it, it's it's another year, another opportunity, and looking forward to who's gonna, uh, you know, who who's gonna take the the lead in in in, in uh, leading our football team. And uh, uh, so all, all that'll be big challenges for our players and our coaches. Yep, and then I don't have in front of me how you guys did on the early signing period, but I saw you guys had about uh, five more players sign, including uh, Zai Hart, your running back, a guy that wasn't the most um, considered in terms of his size, but put the work in and was able to earn an opportunity at the next level. Talk about how special that was for him, and then overall with this 2024 20, uh, class sent out. Well, first of all, we had 18 seniors in, in, in this group, and uh, and I, I mentioned earlier there there are several three-year starters, and uh, um, they're really special to me. I watched these guys grow up and and uh, lead our football team. Uh, they they've done a, a great job of, of representing uh, our, the jersey in our school and our community, and uh, uh, I'm I, you know I wish them best as they go on uh, uh, and, and and you know look look for uh, different, different routes and, uh, uh, different paths, uh, past high school, but uh, it was a great group. Uh, uh, I, I don't want to get into just calling out names cause I'll miss somebody, but, uh, um, <clears throat> we, we had four guys signed, signed this week and, uh, really proud of them. And uh, we have several more that, that, uh, have some opportunities and we'll see where that leads to. But, uh, overall, just a great group of, of, of seniors, great group of kids that, that really, uh, you know they did. They did what uh, we asked them. They they worked hard in the weight room. Uh, they brought good energy, good attitude to practice, and and over a four year career, they had a lot of success. This senior class uh, uh, <clears throat> went to two quarterfinals. They played the semifinal game, and then as a freshman, uh, they were part of a state championship. So, uh, you know, really over forty wins for our senior class, twenty twenty four. So, you know, just a really special group, and. Uh, um, a really uh, enjoyable uh, group of kids, and I'm going to miss them, but I also look forward to seeing what they do down the road. Absolutely. And so you guys have won uh, two straight region titles. I'm trying to look at it real quick. It looks like you're going to have a completely new region this year. It's it's a new region, and, and we're excited about it. It's going to be a good bit more travel for us, uh, but, hey, uh, getting to see some really good opponents. Uh, we open up with Pike County on September the 27th, and then we play uh, Westside Macon, Rutland, uh, Jackson, and uh, then our last games with Morgan County on November the 1st. And, uh, you know, all those teams are, 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 are very competitive and well coached. So, uh, you know, our region will be a big challenge. And uh, uh, But looking forward to playing some, uh, you know, different people and, and uh, teams that – 
uh, you know, are very good, very competitive, uh, some tough road games, and and uh, uh, so so it'll be interesting, you know. I, I, I like, uh, uh, you know. All right, looks like it cut out, but thank you so much, Coach Wiggins. Got to move on, but. Yeah, they're going to have uh, five teams in the region next year, so it's a good balance. Five non-region, five region. They've won back-to-back -back region titles, but this is a completely uh, new group of competitors. Uh, Jackson, Morgan County, Pike, Rutland, and Westside Macon. Last year it was Redan, Columbia, ELCA, Towers, McNair, and Landmark Christian. So wasn't exaggerating. It's completely new. Uh, but it looks like Coach Guest was trying to join. But let's quick, sorry, let's quickly take a break. We'll be back with Coach Guest on the other side. What you doing? Hey, just finishing this claim to get Dave back on the road. Nice. I wonder what Dave's doing. Thing. We've got you covered. Hey, does it matter if this leaks? It don't matter to me. Can't see it from my house. Illegal use of hands and proper training. GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com has 14 different highly skilled trades with tuition free training in our certified apprenticeship programs to train you the right way. Find your career at GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. <clears throat> All right, welcome back. So to conclude the show, we're going to be joined by Hebron Christian head coach Jonathan Guess uh, as soon as he's ready to go. Should be around 1240, but I mean, Hebron last year, I'm not going to lie, I probably overlooked him a little bit, but by the end of the year, I was like, okay, that's a special program they've got going on and they were just so competitive if you look at the games they lost last year it's like that's going to happen the ball's not going to bounce your way the other team's going to have the final possession uh, they lost an overtime game to monroe area they lost to cedar grove in the playoffs by three points so they showed up and they were uh, competitive every single week and that was just year two for coach Gass. i think they are going to be ready to rock and roll this season don't have them yet all right give me a sec <clears throat> but they played a lot of tough uh early games they squared off with commerce they won that game uh they beat chesity to open the season 70 to 14 and that's that potent offense we saw late in the season um, when they're able to uh, close out the year with a 37 to 6 win over Stevens County. So, I mean, that is getting it done on both sides of the ball, throttling Stevens County in just six points, and playing exceptional uh, football. And so, they're going to be playing uh, Therrell in the Corky Kell Dave Hunter Classic. And it should be an exciting opportunity to see them. Uh, up close and personal as they uh, get the season started. They'll be at Hebron 2 o'clock on Friday, August 16th. Then you're going to have the Cass Callaway game and Rome Creekside. I think we got him. Hey, Coach, how's it going? <clears throat> coach Cass, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you now. All right, that's my fault. Um, coach Wiggins was able to come on, and so I think he was on, and then it canceled you guys out. But thank you for joining us, Coach. Um, I was just going over – how impressed I was with the way your team uh, really just improved throughout last year. Didn't matter who you guys were playing. You guys had the confidence, and it looks like you guys were just getting it down on both sides of the ball. Yeah, you know, um, we had a really good year. Um, 
start off winning three games, and then you know we we went through a really rough stretch, four away games, and and we lost to Morgan County, then we went to Benedictine and lost, and then we lost to Oconee, and then we lost to Monroe area, all really close games. Uh, but at the end of the day, we were losing. Um, and so we came back, and we had Franklin, and we had Hart, and we had Stevens, and if we didn't win all three, we weren't going to make the playoffs. So um, what was cool, kind of like you see with the Chiefs right now, you know, they went through that spell where they were two and four. Um, we found a way, and we, and we got better and better and better. And, you know, a big win for us was when we beat Stevens County here 34-3. to three. Um, And then it led to the playoffs, and – since we did have that four-game losing streak, our ranking in the playoffs was great. We had to go to Cedar Grove. But we went there and, and almost beat them, lost 30-27. to 27. So couldn't have been more proud of the boys. And um, it definitely set us up for a great offseason as we head into the 24 season. 100%. And so this was – or that was your second year at the school. So year three, you're familiar with these guys. But, I mean, last year you guys were still a very young team. So – what have you just told this group on just what the goals are are at uh, Hebron Christian, uh, a team that has been solid over the years, but uh, you're trying to get them to that next level uh, and become a championship team? Yeah, I think the, the thing is that we've been talking about is really it's taken two years to kind of get the culture the way that you want it and really have the kids love each other and really – Feel like a family and great chemistry amongst each other um and so we really have that right now like the kids are coming to work every single day they'll do everything that we ask them to do in the weight room um they're playing together you know they're running track together they're playing basketball together lacrosse baseball um just really what you want a high school culture to look like and chemistry to look like and so they're doing all the things and we got really really good players coming back um all of our skill guys are coming back um, and so we're just super excited. You know, you got to go out there and win. Um, but couldn't be more proud of what we've done. You know, we, we, they were single A when I got here and single A private. And then we had to jump to triple A. Everybody was scared of that. Our kids attacked it, had really great success. And, um, so we're just we're ready to see year three, can we, can we really compete for a state championship? But honestly, we thought that we were there last year. Like losing to Cedar Grove by three really made us confident. Yeah, absolutely, and that was the team that you guys faced your first year. Uh, they had a great team back then. They uh, pulled away late in that one, uh, got a big victory. But, I mean, I think you guys definitely proved it. A, a three-point loss to Cedar Grove coming from class single A, taking on the best 3A team and definitely proving uh, you guys have what it takes. But um, who are you excited uh, to see just in the 2024 season uh, help you guys out the gates to really um, start the season off strong and get you guys heading in the right direction. You talking about schedule or players? Players, just guys that you're expecting to come out prepared and ready to go and yeah. um, playing solid right off the gates. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, kind of the one that's getting the most recognition right now is Jarrett Kemp. Georgia just offered him as a six foot three hundred pound wide receiver DB whatever you know that he might end up at college and um, we got two other kids that have got power five offers and Karen Coons and see Sean John a big D lineman and a big outside linebacker um, and then we got really you know have a great rising group of seniors a group of juniors too but um, you know some other guys in that that mix is an offensive lineman Adam put forth uh, 300 pounds and our linebackers back are leading t- Nick Wade, six foot one, two oh five, and uh, we have a running back in that group, uh, Adrian Hollinshit. Um, uh, he, he's going to be really good. He ran eleven one in the hundred meter last night. Got AJ Thomas, a returning DB uh, corner, definitely a college type uh, football player. Um, and then we got another kid, Tyson Craig, coming back. He's a. Um, and then, and then we got our best running back is is uh, a twenty five, a twenty six kid in, in Devon Caldwell, and man, he's probably one of the best running backs in the twenty six class in the state. So um, we're we're just super excited. It's just going to be awesome to see 
you know, year three. They've been in our development, our system now for two years. By the time we get to football season, two and a half years. Um, C. Sean John just squatted 600 for two this morning. Um, so it's really where we want it to be. So it's just super excited to think about football season. But we got to take care of today, right? We got to make sure that we progress progressing and getting better. For sure. And then the other news that happened this week, I saw it was uh, the hiring of Bruce Miller. Um, I did a ranking a couple years back of what school was the best for each position. I gave it to Gainesville and quarterback, just what he was able to do there. But I mean, he's a proven state championship coach. What does that mean to bring him in uh, this year to help lead the offense? Yeah, I'm super excited. You know, uh, Bruce and I got to know each other because his grandson and my son were on the same travel foot baseball team last spring. So we got to know each other um, and spent time together. You know, I told him if he wanted to come over to Heathrow and run our offense, I, t- I was like, man, we got players, we got quarterback, we got this, we got that. I was like, you know, you can come bring your system. Um, can have a absolute ball of course it's nice and exciting to think about hey i got jared Kemp. hey i got all these skilled kids uh to to throw to um and um and so i, I think he was real eager you know he, he doesn't want to be a head coach but man he can come over and call plays and uh be the offensive coordinator um and have fun right he doesn't have to deal with the junk of being a head coach um and so I'm excited for that. I'm also excited for, for the wisdom that he brings. Uh, Bruce is 72 years old. Um, I'm 44. And most of our coaching staff is my age or younger. Um, so just to have his wisdom and his knowledge. And um, when I was at Elka, I had some older guys that were around. And it really just balances you out. Um, and so, and I know we're going to learn a lot from him, right? He knows a lot. Like you said, he's one of the top um, he's had, I mean, he coached Deshaun Watson, Blake Sims. He's had tons of great players at Gainesville. The field's named after him. He's got uh, 240 career football wins or more. Uh, so it checks every single box that you could possibly check. So we're super excited. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. And that's cool. So you guys just started talking football. I mean, how how did it take you to convince him to, to come do it? Or was he just – like itching to like how'd you sell him the the idea i think what really sold him is obviously you know for me man i'm always just trying to connect with people and build friendships with people and learn from people um and bruce and i are a lot of a lot of like he's very personable so we would just sit out there and talk you know um we might uh just talk about you know what they're doing on the baseball field or you know whatever just silly stuff um and then we just started – one day I said, hey, won't you come over and let's just talk football. And so he was sitting in here. I think this is what got, kind of got him thinking. He was sitting in here and, uh, you know, Jarrett Kemp, the, the kid that's got an offer from Georgia, and Carrington Coons. Carrington's got an offer from, like, Georgia Tech, UVA. And, and Carrington played wide receiver too, but he, he also he's getting recruited as an outside linebacker. And, and Carrington's 6'3", 220, and Jarrett's 6'3", 180. And so he saw them, and he's like, oh, my goodness. And um, I think that's really what made him want to come coach over here. I don't think it was me. I think it was the players. (laughs) Yeah, and another thing about Hebron, I'm sure you can compare it to other places, but, I mean, the support around the athletics at that school seems to be incredible. Got some big-time legendary coaches on the basketball teams as well. So what, what has impressed you just about Hebron and the support and focus they have on athletics overall? Yeah, well, well, smart coaches are always chasing administration, right? Like, you never just go out there and look for a job. Like, what you do is you look for an administration that will put you in a situation that can be successful, and they want you to be successful. So we had a great head of school here, uh, Dr. James Taylor, a uh, big vision guy. I mean, he's not just a big vision guy when it comes to sports. I mean, he's a big vision guy when it comes to academics. Um, they actually are start, they started a $20, 25000000 million campaign to be – uh, a, a, the first private Christian school in, in, in the country uh, to, to develop a special needs school. So his vision is just very broad, uh, but he puts you in a position to be successful, and that's he's a Christian, godly man. So definitely 
Uh, that was one thing I think that's appealing here. And then we got a great athletic director, Taylor Davis. I mean, uh, he gives you he gives you every situation that you can be successful. Um, I think the other thing too is is this just shows the investment of the school. Um, is we have one of the best strength coaches in in the country, really. His name's Spencer Arnold. Um, he's very active in um, the Olympics. Um, he'll be working for the Olympics. Has worked for the Olympics. Um, he's had gold medalists um, in Olympic weightlifting. Uh, the school's invested in him. Invested in his weight room. Um, and it just there you go. It just shows you the investment that the school's willing to make to be great. Um, and you know, obviously, location is key as well. Um, we're sitting right here. Um, on the edge of Gwinnett as you ha uh, head into Barrow County. All of Gwinnett is moving out this way. It's just the perfect spot, and I just really, really am excited what can happen here over the next 15 years. Yep, so it's like Atlanta, Athens, you guys are right over uh, by that Winder, Decula area. I want to ask you about the non-region uh, schedule you guys have. It's going to be great test for you guys out the gates you're going to be playing in corky cal at home fellowship um, bt but what do you know about these out-of-state schools it looks like you might have two of them with uh, university christian and then at christ school yeah well we're super excited to uh be in that corky cal um i think we get to be the first game that day that friday 2 p.m first game on tv um so that that's super exciting for us um, and kind of our steps as a program to be relevant and um, here in Gwinnett with all the big schools here. Um, yeah, and then we jump into fellowship. Obviously, they've been a great football program for a long time, um, you know, at least the past 10 years in my recollection. Um, and then we go and we got, um, I think it's Christ School or something like that in Asheville. Um, and they're a boarding school. And so, you know, you, get, you probably could be playing some fifth-year guys. Um, and you just never know what they're going to have. I mean, they could have three guys that are going to Alabama where they might be down. Um, they have really good years, and they have years where they're five and five. Um, but it, it's an exciting thing for us because we're going to Asheville to take a trip there, um, North Carolina. So that's going to be fun. And then, and then we have University Christian on the roster as, on, the, on our schedule as well. University Christian. Um, you know, they, they're right up there with Trinity from Jacksonville and Bowles from Jacksonville. They, they've been kind of a powerhouse in there in Jacksonville for a long time um, and definitely have produced some, like, major football talent. And they were looking for a game and willing to come up here uh, game three. And so, man, we jumped on that. And then, you know, BT's looking for a game, right? And um, that's going to be a big game for us. I mean, they're a big private school. Um, and Ed Dudley's there. He does a phenomenal job. So those five non-region games are super exciting. They're all, they're all winnable games for us. Of course, they're all losable as well. So yep. uh, that definitely motivates you in the off season. And, um, you know, so we're excited. Yeah, that's a great schedule. So you'll have one out-of-state trip, but then you'll host the other one. Yeah, BT and then, yeah, the Christian School gauntlet with Fellowship Christian and BT both Roswell powerhouses then in the region it looks like Stevens County they're gonna be well prepared for that matchup after you guys earned that big win over them uh, last season Prince Avenue Christian East Jackson Hart County and Franklin County uh, what are your just initial thoughts on uh, the region and how exciting it's gonna be yeah well, you know, it's, I think it's a good region. I think it's really exciting. It's kind of like our region last year. Um, you lose a Coney and Monroe area, but you pick up Prince, um, which is, you know, they're a powerhouse. Um, in right Stevens County, I mean, you're going to go in. They've won the region the past two years. We've been able to beat them, but, you know, we, we, we need to take care of business in the other games. Um, Hart County is always a solid team. I'm learning about East Jackson. Um, don't know much about them. Um, Probably the game that excites me the most and our school the most um, is Prince Avenue. Um, I know when I got here, I mean, Prince Avenue is a team that, that Hebron had, has never beat. Um, they're kind of like the team that we, we wish we could get to Prince Avenue's level. Um, and so I definitely think over the past two years we've gotten to their level. Um, and so now to prove that you can play with them and go beat them, you got to play them. Um, and so 
Um, I mean, I have nothing but re- major respect for what um, Coach Vandergrift does there at Prince Avenue. Um, probably one of the top coaches in the state, one of the top programs in the state. Uh, but we get them here game 10. Um, and we are very fired up about it. Uh, it's kind of a measuring stick of, of where we are as a program. For sure. And, yeah, I think the last team that beat them um, in the playoffs was Trinity Christian, obviously. Uh, coach Dallas, uh, your former um, assistant coach, that you guys had some epic games against each other as well. But you mentioned uh, Spencer Arnold in the weight room today, 600 pounds twice on the squat rack. Uh, talk about him a little bit and what his impact's going to be on the field. Coach, should I lose you? Can you hear me, Coach? I got you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. I was asking about Spencer Arnold. Sorry, Spencer Arnold, the massive 600-pound squats today for two reps. What's his impact going to be on uh, the field this season? Yeah, well, that's – so, Seashawn John is is the kid that did the uh, 600 for two. Okay. Spencer Arnold is our strength coach. And – no, I, I think that Seashawn, he's got a UVA offer right now. That's his biggest offer. I think you, I think he's flying under the radar like a lot of our kids are. Uh, but I think he's one of the best defensive linemen in the state. Um, and just imagine him in the interior. Um, here he is, six foot three, 305 pounds, squatting 600 for two. I mean, you're not going to be able to block him. Um, so, I mean, we're just – I mean, we're going to build our defense around him. And um, so we're, I mean, we're fired up about him and, and can't be more thrilled in his progress. Yeah, that's college numbers already. And uh, he's still a junior. Uh, looks like his stats last year, eight sacks, uh, 48 tackles. But uh, who else defensively you think has a, a chance to really make an impact and uh, disrupt the opponents? Yeah, I think a kid that, you know, I've talked about Carrington Coons. I've, I've mentioned some of the other guys. Now, here's a kid that, that we definitely think is a Power 5 player. He's a class of 26, he's 6'5", 245 pounds, and his name is Fletcher Turk. And um, and so um, I think when it's all said and done, he'll be a kid that's got offers from everybody, and a kid that nobody knows about right now. So he's a kid to watch. Um, and we, I think he's going to be extremely dominant on that side of the football. Um, and then I'll say this, probably our best football player all around on our football team is a, is a, a tw- class of 26 kid uh, named Max Steve. Max is five foot eight, five foot nine, 108 pounds. Um, and he is one of the best football players I have ever coached. Uh, he ranks right up there with Caleb Hood, who just graduated from Georgia Southern. And Caleb Hood broke the Georgia Southern wide receiver record. Um, and so that's how good Max is. Um, and so having him back, leading the secondary, leading the defense, um, those are two guys for everybody to be on the lookout. Certainly. I got them written down, and we will be uh, following you guys closely this offseason. Can't wait to see you guys kick things off. Coach Guest, thank you so much for your time, and can't wait for the season. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Have a great day. You bet. All right, so there goes Coach Guest. So. Busy show today, Uh, three guests, but I hope you guys got some insight on those programs and the games to watch for tonight. But we'll be back on Monday. Uh, We have some championships this weekend. We'll have the dance results, um, region tournament updates. So go to scoreatl.com. We'll see you Monday, and go Chiefs. What you doing? Hey. Just finishing this claim to get Dave back on the road. Nice. I wonder what Dave's doing. You do your thing. We've got you covered.